Hi, this is Matt with CustomCarGrills.com. On this woven wire installation, we're going to be removing the four center and two side pieces for this Ford F-150 grill. The first thing I did after the factory grill was removed was to cut the plastic areas that were interconnecting the factory grill pieces. Then I used a flathead screwdriver to bend the tabs back in order to release the factory grill inserts from the factory grill frame. I went ahead and repeated this step for the remainder of the center and side pieces as well. Next, I'm going to use some wire nippers and take out the remainder of the tab that's left on the back side of the grill. The mesh that I will be installing needs to be as close to the back of these openings as possible. You may need to go as far as to sand the edges down to make sure you get a nice flush fit. For this project, I decided to use my CustomCarGrills.com iPhone app that I designed. This app is free and available in the App Store on your iPhone. And as you can see here, we're able to flip through all the different materials that we stock. I'm going to try and narrow it down to find a couple that I think will fit just right for this vehicle. Now I'm going to use some real life pieces that I've taken out of a big sample pack and I'm going to see how they match up on the bumper here in reality. I really liked the way that the woven wire XXL mesh looked on this grill. I found a sheet that is large enough to get this done, and what we're going to need to do is cut it into a few sections going sideways and a couple going vertical. I'm simply just using a black marker to mark off a line in between the openings. We're going to cut these a little bit larger than what they need to be. This particular material will fray a little bit, so we need to leave a little room for error. I've cut the material in strips, and now I'm just simply separating the two center pieces. This is the aluminum woven wire material, and as you can see, it's very easy to cut with just the basic pair of tin snips. Next, we'll need to form the mesh so that it contours over the back of the opening. It's usually best to mark off the shape of the factory opening. This way, you'll have some sort of point of reference as to where to bend the material. Oftentimes, I find it easier to mold mesh to the back of the bumper when you cut corners out of the edges. This will give you a defined top, bottom, left, and right area that needs to be folded. You should also be cautious and mindful of the material that's fraying out of the sheet. Next, I'll be using a sheet metal vice grip in order to grab a hold of the material and bend it at roughly a 90 degree angle. Depending on the material that you're using, you may need to clamp and bend a sixteenth to a quarter of an inch past where you'd marked off, otherwise it's going to be too tight of a fit when you try and fit the mesh on. Now that you've got it bent, let's go ahead and do a test fit and see how we did. For the most part, it fit right on, but there is a little adjustment that is needed. Some wires may need to be moved a little bit, and some actually may need to be removed altogether. The piece you end up with may not look that pretty from the back, but from the front of the grill, this will look correct. Once you have all of the pieces cut and bent, it's time to fasten the mesh to the grill. I'm simply using some long cable ties in order to get a temporary hold of the mesh under the back of these openings. I'm also using some foam padding on the front of the grill to prevent any scratching from the cable ties being fastened. Some of the ties that I used wrapped around the edge of the grill. Others actually had to tie from opening to opening. Here's a preview of our work thus far from the front. I noticed a couple minor changes that we need to make on the back, but overall I think we're ready for the final installation very soon. Earlier I noticed a couple wires that were unable to be bent using the sheet metal vice grip. In order to get these rolled over the edge, I'm simply using a flathead screwdriver and pushing the wire against the back of the opening. With some of the thicker gauge or stainless steel wire, this won't be possible and you'll need to use a hammer and maybe a wood block in order to get this accomplished. For this type of installation, I like using an adhesive, and automotive goop is usually my go-to favorite. This will come out of the tube easy, dries clear, and usually holds very well. It's got a little bit of flex in it, which is important, so that way it's not going to crack later down the road like many other adhesives. It does take about a day to dry, and you do need to use it in a well-ventilated area. 
But overall, I find that this is the best adhesive for most of my grill applications. As you can see here, I'm simply applying it around the perimeter of the wire mesh and making sure that I have enough so that it touches the mesh to the back of the bumper. We want to make sure we have full coverage on this. Definitely use caution to make sure that none of it drips through the front. After giving the adhesive a day to cure, I'm going to remove the cable ties and protective foam that were temporarily holding this mesh on. Now we have the new wire mesh fully installed and ready to go. The first thing you'll want to do is test the strength of your installation. You want to make sure that you have a permanent bond and the mesh isn't going anywhere. Overall, I think the end result looks great. This really didn't take that long. Some of the hardest parts of it are simply removing the factory components. From there, you just need to take a little bit of time to select the right mesh, cut it and bend it, and then use an adhesive to put it on. This could easily be done by yourself or with a friend over the course of a weekend. I hope you liked this video, and if you have any questions about this one or any others, feel free to contact me.